Hi, this is Mr. Reese, and this video is going to go over how to evaluate rational expressions. We'll cover multiplying, dividing, and adding and subtracting. So how about we just jump right into it and start with multiplying. Let's say you're given something like this. Multiply this fraction to this fraction. Typically when you multiply fractions, what you do is you just simply multiply the numerator to the numerator and then the denominator to the denominator. If you can do any kind of reduction, you would try to handle that first, or you can do that second, up to you. Typically, reducing first uh, is, is a good idea, only because this prevents our values from getting too large. So, first thing you want to do here in this particular case is that if we want to reduce, we want to have this fully factored out first. So, this top polynomial here factors. In fact, they all do, so I'll just jump right to it. And what we'll do is we'll write them in place of the original values. Now, once you've gotten to this point, it's go ahead and just go ahead and reduce this. Remember that when you reduce its top to bottom, whether it's vertical like this or diagonal like so, you just don't reduce top to top or bottom to bottom. So we could, for example, reduce out x plus 2 or x plus 3. Again, like this is fine, like this is fine, like this is fine. You should see another x minus 3. So that pretty much does it. This is all we're left with. So that's our solution. Now let's try dividing. Let's say we got something like this. Now typically when you're dividing any fraction, you're really just going to end up multiplying. And oftentimes what you might hear say in an elementary school classroom when it comes to dividing fractions is this. When dividing fractions, don't ask why. Just flip the second and multiply. So the second, meaning the second fraction, if you take this denominator, move it up to the top, take this numerator, move it to the bottom, change your divide to multiply, and then what you got after that is just another multiplication problem, which means you're really just doing this now. Multiply. Now after you've done this, it's the same steps just as in the last problem. Fully factor first. Let's bring this down a bit. So we factored each of those groups. x squared minus 4 becomes this. This gives us this. And then this one, and then this one. And then we can just move on to reducing. Remember, when it comes to reduction, it's top to bottom. Whether you're going vertical or diagonal, still the same thing. x minus 2's reduce out. x plus 5's reduce out. x plus 3's reduce out x plus 2's reduce out. And lo and behold, look at what we've got. Think it's 0? Well, not quite. Just because everything goes away does not necessarily mean it's 0. Remember, we're reducing. We're not subtracting. And when you reduce them out like so, you're technically reducing them and making them a 1 over 1. So all of these are 1's. 1, 1, 1, 1. one. So what you have essentially is 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 over 1, 1, 1, 1. So that's your answer. Let's move on to adding and subtracting. Let's say that you're going to subtract these two particular fractions. Well, one of the things you might notice is that neither of these two have a common denominator. So we cannot just simply take x and minus x and get 0 and we're done. Not quite. We want to get a common denominator first, but before you even do that, you want to observe the first step that we did in the last two problems, and that is you want to fully factor. Now by fully factoring, what I mean is just the denominator. You don't necessarily need to factor the numerator, though we really can't do it in this particular case. Now let's worry about getting a common denominator. Once we figure out what our GCD is, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by whatever is missing. 
So you'll notice that in this particular case, both have an x minus 6. But we have an x minus 1 in this fraction, not here. x plus 4 in this fraction, but not here. So that's what we're going to multiply. We'll multiply x minus 1, top and bottom, to this first one, x plus 4 to the second one, and in doing so, we'll wind up with identical denominators. Now that we've done that, what we're going to do now is combine this just into one large fraction. Since both have the same thing for the denominator, we're just going to simply write that on the bottom. But on top, it's this whole thing collected together. So it's something like that. You have your x times x minus 1, that's this first part, minus this whole grouping here. And again, they have a common denominator, you just write it once. Let's go ahead and take this stuff now and multiply through. So we get that. Collect our like terms, and you might notice x squareds go away. These two are like terms, so that's negative 5x. And that's essentially it. Now you'll notice we did not multiply these on the bottom. And typically you don't want to until you can't do anything on top. And when the top is done, you look for an opportunity to try to reduce if you can. So this is a little different from the multiplying and dividing where we would try to reduce after factoring and then do the multiplication. In this case, you tend to reduce at the end. So you don't do it before then. However, in this case, we can't reduce. So that's really it. So what about complex fractions like this? What you should note for this is that you have this huge quantity divided by this huge quantity. So what you really have is just two pieces. So let's take each piece, this top and this bottom, and let's combine each of them into one fraction. Let's just look at the top here. For the top, you have x over x minus 2, and then this is 1, in other words, 1 over 1. If you want a common denominator, we'd multiply the top and bottom here by 1, top and bottom here by x minus 2. And that would give us what, this would give us a common denominator. We would be able to collect all of these together and then put that over x minus 2. Likewise for the bottom. For the bottom, this is also 1 over 1, so we're going to need to multiply this one by x squared minus 4 on the top and on the bottom. So that is what we get. We have x plus 1 times the quantity x minus 2. You're seeing that here. All over x minus 2. The bottom fraction, again, collected together, that's the 3 plus 1 times x squared minus 4, right here, and then x squared minus 4 for its denominator. Some people may be tempted to reduce, like say here and here, and that would be perfectly fine if we had this scenario here. In other words, this quantity was being multiplied to the rest, but we don't have that here. So you'd be making up your own math there. And if that's what you're all about, well, down the hall, you can go to your physics uh, class. OK, let's kind of clean this up a bit. The top here, if you distribute your 1 and then collect your terms, you are going to get 2x minus 2. Here, do the same thing. Distribute that 1 and collect your terms. And what you will get is you'll get x squared minus 1. How about we write this a little differently? There we are. This top quantity is what you're seeing right here. This bottom quantity is what you're seeing right here. So it's the top, which is this, divided by the bottom, which is this. And that's what you're seeing with the two fractions here. So what's next, you might ask? Remember, when dividing fractions, don't ask why. That's right, just flip the second and multiply. 
So there we are on that one. And now that we've done that, let's just continue on with the next step, which is what we did before. We'll go ahead and fully factor that and then reduce. So there you are. This first one here, this 2x minus 2, factor out of 2. This is what you get. x squared minus 4 is the difference of 2 squares. So that's what you're seeing here. Same thing on the bottom. x squared minus 1. That's x minus 1 and x plus 1. Just go ahead and reduce all that out. And that's what we are left with. So to summarize this, when you see like complex fractions, what you're really getting is just you're getting two different problems. You're getting one problem on top and on the bottom that involves adding and subtracting fractions. And then once you have done that and combined them into one fraction, then you're dividing fractions. So we're getting everything in all at once. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.